Hello everyone and welcome back to the 3T Path channel. My name is Giri Daridas and welcome back to our Uddhava Gita course. So we started in our last class a topic that's a little contentious, a little difficult to understand, which is the Varnashrama system, which is wrongly accused of being the caste system. So it's very nice that in this class, we'll be able to show you verses where Krishna is clearly not teaching the caste system. The caste system is a perversion of the system of Varnas that Krishna created. And we'll be seeing the verses on this topic today. And of course, if you want to watch all the previous classes in this Uddhava Gita course, make sure to check out uddhavagita.com and also become a member of this channel so then you can access the whole course through that website. Okay, so now we are in the 11th canto, 17th chapter, verse 12. And Krishna, of course, is speaking to Uddhava here. He says, O greatly fortunate one, at the beginning of Treta Yuga, Vedic knowledge appeared from my heart, which is the abode of the air of life in three divisions, as Rig, Sama, and Yajur. Then, from that knowledge, I appeared as threefold sacrifice. So in the last verse we saw in the, we saw what happened in the golden age, Satya Yuga. So we saw that in Satya Yuga, in the golden era as we translate, there were no divisions. All humanity, they were all perfected beings. Everyone, there was no need to organize society because each individual was already purely situated in his duties, his or her duties. Krita Yuga is called the Yuga of Duties. It was everybody was doing what had to be done. So everybody was 100% in Dharma. So there's no need to organize and everybody's just, everything was perfect. And everybody was focusing just on Om. There was no need for the Vedas. There was no need for sacrifices and Yagas and all these religious details. There was no need for anything. Everybody just had Om. That's all they needed, just the syllable Om. And with that one syllable Om, everybody who wanted was enlightened, focused on Lord Hamsa, focusing on Krishna in the form of Lord Hamsa. That's all that happened in the Golden Age. So that was very nice. But then Treta Yuga comes. You know, the time, the wheel of time keeps moving forward and things degrade. That's how the system of the Yugas work, the age cycle. It degrades. It goes from 100% Dharma all the way to 0% Dharma. And then there's a, you know, a, a cataclysm of sorts. Everybody dies and then there's a new start at the Golden Age. So right now, of course, we are in Kali Yuga, the last of the ages, which started 5,000 years ago. There's still 430,000 years, 428,000 years to go. So there's a lot of degradation ahead of um, humanity. But we're right now in a special little moment. But there's a lot of degradation because we're in Kali Yuga. That's why it's so difficult and horrible. But so starts in Satya Yuga, now Treta Yuga. So in Treta Yuga, you're already down to 75% dharmic levels. If you could, you know, measure out all the levels of people's dharma, now it's down to 75% at the beginning of Treta Yuga, and it will go down to 50% by the end of Treta Yuga and the beginning of Dwapara Yuga. So already things are complicated, already people are cheating and stealing and lying and things need to, or to be organized and you know, people get lazy. So already there's all this drama going on. So then at the beginning of Treta Yuga, Krishna manifests the Vedas, specifically the Rig Sama and Yajur Veda. You might be thinking, but wait a second, isn't it four Veda text, isn't there one missing? Yes, the Atarva Veda is missing here because the Atarva Veda is kind of like a darker text. It's kind of like a little, little, not so, you know, black magic y kind of thing. So it's not always listed, you know, with the, with the Vedas. It's not always considered one of the Veda Samhitas. But the three are the Rig, Sam, and Yajur. Okay, no question about those three. So Krishna mentions those three there, the three Vrit, the three divisions. Okay, and then of course, they start having to do Yagyas. 
So the yagyas um, start in Tirtha Yuga, the fancy, complicated, that's what the, that's what the Veda Samhitas teach. And if you're wondering, what does the Rig Veda, Sama Veda, Yajur, what are they about? How come we don't have, you know, a, a classes on them? Well, because they're just basically hymns and, and meters and descriptions of sacrifices for the demigods. It's the it's the books for the mundane Vedic religion of worshipping the demigods and not the spiritual path of yoga, which is what we're teaching here in the 3T path, which is what, you know, which is the nectar, the good stuff, what Krishna taught in Bhagavad Gita, in Uddhava Gita, in this Bhagavad Purana, Yoga Sutras. That's what we teach here in the 3T path. And the, and the Veda Samhitas, they're more focused on these hymns and when mantras to worship the demigods and obtain from them material benefits. Okay, purport. In Treta Yuga, the bowl of religion, because Dharma, the bowl of Dharma, Dharma is represented by a bowl. So the Dharma bowl loses one leg. And only 75% of Dharma principles are manifested represented by the three principal Vedas, Rig, Sama, and Yajur. The Lord appears in the process of threefold Vedic sacrifice. The three divisions are understood as follows. The Hota priest offers oblations into the fire and chants the Rig Veda. The Udgata priest chants the Sama Veda and the Advaryu priest who arranges the sacrificial ground, altar, etc., chants the Yajur Veda. In Trita Yuga, such sacrifice is the authorized process for spiritual perfection. The word pranat in this verse refers to the universal form of the personality of Godhead. This form is further described in the following verses. So Krishna is using here. Um, the image of his Virat Rupa, his universal form. So it's, a, it's showing how everything in the universe comes from the body of God. So this kind of language, this kind of imagery is being used here. So the Vedas are coming from his heart. And we'll see that the Varnas are coming from his body as well. Okay. Verse 13, in Trita Yuga, the four Varnas were manifested from the universal form of the personality of God. And so now, in Trita Yuga, you have the Vedas coming up and now the Varnas as well. The Brahmanas appeared from the Lord's face, the Kshatriyas from the Lord's arms, the Vaishyas from the Lord's thighs and the shudras from the legs of that mighty form. Each social division was recognized by its particular duties and behavior. Not birth, not family name. Each was recognized by its particular duties and behavior. It's an individual concept. It's not family name. The, the perversion of the system, what makes it a caste system, and to this day, disturbing society, is because people thought, oh, hey, if I'm a Brahmana, my son's a Brahmana. I mean, come on, guys. I mean, if you have children, if you've seen children, if you've opened your eyes and look around, you can clearly see that children are not copies of their parents. They're very different. You know, your parents sometimes are very, like all into finance, and then, then the kid's an artist. You know, you know the parents are like you know, musician, crazy hippie types, and the, and the children are like, you know, all like corporate types. It's just different. It's just people are different. You know, sometimes you, you know, your, your parents could be military types, and then you're like, you want to be a doctor, you want to study biology, you know, it's like people are different. It's not that you have scientists and then, you know, uh, my wife's a, an astrophysicist. It's not like my kids are like, yeah, we're going to be astrophysicists. 
and I'm like doing all this, you know, teaching stuff, this Brahmana work. And the kids were like, yeah, we're going to teach Vedas. They're not. They haven't said that yet. They might, but I don't think so. So they're like, no, we want to want to make video games. <laughs> I want to play soccer. You know, it's like they're going to do something else. So this idea that the parent is just making carbon copies of, you know, it's, it's crazy. And that's the caste system. So we'll see it's based on individual particular duties and behavior. So let's look at this. Verse 14. The, now, so he mentioned the Varnas, what about the Ashramas? It's called the Varnashrama system. So it's got the four Varnas, the four types of work, and then the four stages of life. So now he's going to talk about the Ashramas. So the Griha Ashrama, the married life, the married order of life appeared from the loins of my universal form, and the Brahmachari, the celibate, uh, the brahmacharis, the celibate students, came from my heart. The forest dwelling, vana, vana means forest, so the vana prasta means those who live in the forest. So the forest, the vana, the vana vasa, the people who are living in the forest, so the forest dwelling, retired order of life, appeared from my chest, and the renounced order of life, the sannyas order of life was situated within the head of the of my universal form. So he's giving this again this imagery of the body. So grihastas from the loins, you know, because that's the focus. It's like couples and having children, sex. So loins, the brahmacharis from heart, the vana, the forest dwelling retired people from the chest and the sannyasis from his head. Verse 15. The various occupational and social divisions, so the varnas and the ashramas in the Sanskrit here, so the various varnas and ashramas of human society appeared according to inferior and superior natures manifest in the situation of the individual's birth. It's the individual's birth. It's what the, 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 the individual is manifesting when he's born, when he or she is born. Okay? So these are according to their natures, according to your own, you know, psychophysical nature not your family name. Purport. According to Srila Vishvana Chakravati Thakur, the Brahmanas and the Sannyasis being situated on the head of the universal form of the Lord are considered to be the most qualified, whereas the Shudras and Grihasas being on the legs or loins of the Personality of Godhead are considered to be in the lowest position. A living entity is born with a certain amount of intelligence, beauty, and social opportunity, and is therefore situated in a particular occupational and social position within the Varnashrama system. Ultimately, such positions are external designations. But since the majority of human beings are conditioned by the external energy of the Lord, they should act according to the scientific Varnashrama divisions until they reach the stage of Jivan Mukta or liberated life. The Jivan Mukta means liberated while still incarnated. You have this special term, Jivan Mukta. So you're still incarnated, you're still in this body, but you're a liberated soul. It means that you've gotten, you figured it out, you got it, it's done deal, but you're still here, you still have some karma to burn out, or you have some mission, some work to do for God here. Since you're here, you might as well do some work for God. You might as well help some other people on your way out. Verse 16. So here we go now. Now we'll see the quality. So like, oh, is that person a Brahmana? You don't ask the last name. Oh, who's your father? No, these are not the questions. If you want to know if a person is a Brahmana, this is what you look for. Check it out. Peacefulness, self-control, austerity, tapas, Cleanliness, socham, 
satisfaction, santosha, tolerance, simple straightforwardness, mad bhakti, devotion to me, mercy, dhaya, which is one of the big elements of dharma, dhaya, mercy, satyam, truthfulness, these are the natural qualities of the brahmanas. This is the real Varnashma system. So is a person a Brahmana? Well, let's, let's go through the list. You know, get, get the check, checklist out, you know? Like, okay, um, peacefulness, yes or no? Self-control. Dhana, can you, you know? So sama, dhana, self-control. Tapas, austerity. There's a video on this channel about tapas. Tapas means that you can stick to dharma. You're not influenced by kama, desire. Desire doesn't drag you away from your purpose, from your duty. You stick to your duty. So that's tapas. So, tapas. Then, socham, cleanliness. That's the principle of yoga. Socham is what is the first niyama. Of course, these are all there in the yamas and niyamas as well, right? This is practically a list of the yamas and niyamas. So, santosha also there in the niyamas. So, satisfaction, santosha. Kshanti, forgiveness. Arjavam, simplicity and straightforwardness. You're not like, oh, you know, I'm going to go do this and, you know, you lie and, you know, and you try to convince. No, it's just like, you know, you just, it's simple because your mind can't be bothered with all these tricks because you're not trying to get anything out of anyone. You're not trying to fool people. You just want to be straight and simple and truthfulness. It's just like, this is what it is. I'm not trying to convince you I'm going to go around here so I can get this thing. No, I'm not doing that. That's the fantasy paradigm where I'm focused on a result and I don't care how I get to the result. So then it's like, oh, I'm going to do this trick and this trick and we'll get there. No, it's just like, this is what it is. Mad Bhakti, devotion to me. Krishna includes here's the list. You have to have devotion to Krishna to be a Brahmana. Dhaya, mercy, and satyam, truthfulness. Of course, truthfulness, devotion, cleanliness, and tapas are actually the four principles of Dharma. These are the four pillars of Dharma, these four mentioned right here. So basically, you're a Dharmic person. So if you are, I'm trying to get everybody who is in this following me in these courses, in my courses, in this channel, reading my book, to follow Dharma, because it's wonderful. So if you're following the 3T path, then you should be qualified as a Brahmana. You should be living as a Brahmana, because these are qualities that you're cultivating in your life. You're sticking to Dharma, truthfulness, satyam, socham, devotion to Krishna, all these things we're teaching here everything you can do. So maybe you, you were born, you know, you didn't get a proper, you know, like me, you didn't get a proper like you know, direction, but now you can, you can take from these texts, you can take from the guru, and then you can be qualified like this as well. So everybody can be a Brahmin if they can cultivate these, if they can manifest and live these qualities, not their last name, not who their parents are, that is not mentioned here at all. Verse 17. Okay, now what about the Kshatriyas? So now we know what the Brahmanas are like. What are the Kshatriyas like? Dynamic power, bodily strength, determination, heroism, tolerance, generosity, great endeavor, steadiness, devotion, to the Brahmanas and leadership are the natural qualities of Kshatriyas. So that's what makes a Kshatriya. And you know, you read this, this is Krishna's plan. This is Krishna's original plan for how to organize society. So it's looking pretty good. We have these Brahmanas with those wonderful qualities. And now, 
for leading society, for organizing, for protecting people, we have the Kshatriyas. And look at these qualities. I mean, don't you wish? <laughs> we, you know, don't you wish our leaders had these qualities? The world is going to hell because our leaders don't have these qualities. They're mostly just horrible sociopaths trying to steal our money and manipulate us. <clears throat> but don't you wish they had these qualities? So I'll read them again. Dynamic power. So just like you just imagine, it's like, you know, you need someone. Bodily strength, because these were the warriors. <clears throat> these led, they led from the front. Not like our military leaders today who lead from like a, a cushy office back in the, you know, in their Ministry of Defense, Pentagon, whatever, you know, like, yes, I think uh, you should send soldiers over there. Yeah, no, they led from the front. The king was right there. You look at the Battle of Kurukshetra, look at Bhagavad Gita. Who is standing in front of everyone? It's Arjuna. They're not like, oh yeah, they're back in their palace. Yeah, yeah, let's send some soldiers to Kurukshetra. No, they were leading from the front. The five Pandavas were the point of the spear in the formation. They're not like, yeah, let's put all the cannon fodder in front. Let's get some little shudras to go in front holding weapons. No, they were in front. Bodily strength. So you have to have, this is a bit of a topic in the US elections. So you have to have, you know, bodily strength because you, like, you can't have your leader being frail. So that's an issue. Determination. Heroism. Heroic. You, have to, you can't be f afraid. You know, it's the opposite of heroism is a person who's afraid, won't do things, won't act. No, you want action, dynamic power, bodily strength, heroism. And then tolerance. <clears throat> because with all this power, you can't have somebody who's just going to be reacting crazily to things. Oh, oh yeah, you did this, I'm going to destroy your whole family now. No, whoa, tolerance. So you have to have that restraint that comes from tolerance. Generosity. The kshatriyas were responsible for making sure everybody was well. Generosity. Everyone has to be happy, healthy, <clears throat> clothed. Everyone. That was the responsibility of the leader. Not like this nonsense governance we have today where they just take your money. They are the poorest person, they're working hard, you give me your taxes. And then they take the most taxes from the poorest people who are working so hard. It's crazy. In the Vedas, the Shudas were never taxed. How can you take, how can you take from the poorest people? If the government is supposed to give to the poorest people. Take from the, from the rich, from the production from enterprises, you know, somebody's making a business and their business is going well, okay, you have a, a farm and you produce, you know, a hundred tons of grain, okay, give the government 25 tons of grain. It's fair, isn't it? I mean, you, you can only have this nice plantation because we're defending the land and making sure everything is going well and your family is safe and educated and protected and everything's fine and thieves aren't taking over your land or some other, you know, invading group. So it's fair. And then you have some factory and you're making a hundred pairs of shoes and you, you know, you give the equivalent of 25 pairs of shoes to the government. So that's how it worked. They would get 25% of production. And then this 25% wasn't for them. It wasn't so they would hoard it and become, no, so then they would, generosity, they would have to make sure, okay, that's what we use to make sure nobody's hungry, everybody's got shoes, and everybody's got clothes, and everybody's good. That's how it worked. So generosity, tolerance and generosity, very important in government leaders. Great endeavor. You have to work really hard. You have to do great things. It's like a whole country. It's a whole nation. You can't just be sitting around playing golf. You have to, like, Put some great endeavor into it. Not easy. Steadiness. You have to stick to it. You have to maintain it. You have to be firm. 
You can't be all over the place, wishy-washy. You have to be firm in steadiness. And then, devotion to the Brahmanas. And this is the beauty of the system. The Brahmanas devoted to God, to Krishna. And the Kshatras have to be devoted to the Brahmanas. Because the Brahmanas, they had all these wonderful qualities we just read. They were, they were compassionate and truthful, and they were you know, devoted. So they had all these wonderful qualities. So you want the leaders to take their cues from these enlightened, wise people. That makes sense, right? Because here, in this wonderful description, it's all very dynamic and power and strength and all that stuff. But where's the wisdom? Where's the, okay, but which way do we go, left or right? Where's that part? Of what's best for society? What should we do? What are the goals? That part is with the Brahmanas. No, well, the Brahmanas will take care of that. They're the ones taking care of knowledge, of wisdom. Guidance. So they're doing the studying, the knowledge, the wisdom, so like the scientists and philosophers and, and of course the devotees, you know, the spiritualists. So let them guide society. Wouldn't that be nice? If we had these wonderful, wonderfully qualified leaders, but being guided by the most intelligent and wise amongst us. That was the system. It's a very nice system. We messed it up, didn't work, it's not working, but it was a very nice system that Krishna created. And now, verse 18. Faith in Vedic civilization. Dedic, this, is the, this is the Vaishas. Faith in Vedic civilization. So the Vaishas, the Vaishas are, they had to produce. They're the, they're the ones producing wealth. You notice that the other two didn't produce wealth. There was no mention of them producing things. They're not, you know, but the Vaishas, they're producing wealth. So they have factories and banks and farms especially. They're producing wealth. So they have to have faith in Vedic civilization, dedication to charity, freedom from hypocrisy, service to the Brahmanas, and perpetually desiring to accumulate more money are the natural qualities of the Vaishas. So this is very interesting. I love the last one, right? This one. This one the Vaishas kept. This one quality has been preserved very nicely. Desiring to accumulate more money. Perpetually desiring to accumulate more money. So, you know, people who have, because people have some, people are born like that. Right? Some people are born with this perpetual desire to accumulate more money. And it really is fascinating. Because they don't have a target in mind. I mean, yeah, when they were like, yeah, a million. But as soon as they got to a million, even like way before they got there, they were like, no, no, what if a million? Now I'm just going to buy a million dollar watch. Never mind getting a million. A million is just like so I can buy a nice watch or something. Then I'll need 10 million and 20 million, 100 and a billion and 100 billion. It never ends. And then you have 300 billion. Like, yeah, but I could do that thing. And, you know, so it, you know, it never, it perpetually desiring to accumulate more money. So that's a quality. Well, let's work with that. That's fine for a Vaishya. Not so good when the Kshatriya have, when the leader of the not not good at all. Because then they're like, oh, okay, I'm going to perpetually make more money exploring this country. And so they start stealing from everyone. So not good. So we don't want that. We don't want, a kshat, we don't want the leader of the country. We don't want a military leader who perpetually wants more money. Mm-mm. That's not going to be a happy thing. We don't want some intellectual type who perpetually wants more money. That's not going to be good either because then their interest won't be to truthfulness anymore, won't be to compassion, diet, won't be to cleanliness. No, you'll be making money. It's a different thing. It's like, you know, making money is a thing in the future. It's a different mindset. So the Vaisha, okay, you want to make more and more money. That's great. But also, 
not just that because or else you just become like some crazy monster like we have some crazy capitalist monsters around you know just make more money destroy forests enslave people steal corrupt no we don't want that then you become like you know like a like a drug lord or something no a gun dealer no so we don't want just more and more money at any cost we need faith in Vedic civilization. So, you know, a person who believes in the, in the civilization, they want to be part of this civilization. They, they want to, they, they like the system, they have faith in this system Krishna created. And they're dedicated to charity. Because then they're like, okay, you know, they're going to take that wealth and not just hoard it. They're not going to just be this crazy, like, avarice and just more and more money. No, they're going to also give charity. They're going to help out society. It's very important. And then freedom from hypocrisy. Don't pretend that you're not out just to make money more and more and you don't have any lemon. You just want more and more money. Don't pretend that's not what you're doing. Don't pretend to be some evangelical preacher when all you really wanted was just to make more and more money. Don't pretend to be a leader so you can go into government and become a politician just so you can steal money. No hypocrisy. Just be a business person. Just take, you know, produce. Be, okay, I'm out here to make money. So no hypocrisy. And then service to the Brahmanas. Also, so the Brahmanas, the head of the society, again, they have all those wonderful qualities. They're peaceful, compassionate, truthful, clean. So figure out how to help them. Be willing to help them make the society better. Service to Brahmanas. So these three, these four qualities, faith in Vedic civilization, dedication to charity, freedom from hypocrisy, and service to the Brahmanas, balance out and direct, kind of fence off the uh, desiring to accumulate more money perpetually. So the perpetually desiring more money is balanced by these nice noble qualities. Very good. So that was the Vaishas. Purport. Atushtir Arto Pachaye indicates that a Vaisha is never satisfied with any amount of wealth and always wants to accumulate more. On the other hand, he is Dhananishta, or dedicated to charitable work. Brahma Sevi, always engaged in assisting the Brahmanas, and Adhamba, free from hypocrisy. This is due to Ashtikim, or complete faith in the Vedic way of life, and confidence that one will be rewarded or punished in the next life for one's present activities. The fervent desire of the Vaishas to accumulate wealth is not the same as ordinary material greed because it is purified and tempered by the superior qualities mentioned in this verse. Okay, so now we've done the Brahmas, Kshatras and the Vaishas, and in the next class we'll continue with the other, with the last Varna, the Shudras. So you can see, anyway, just to wrap it up, you can see that the system is based on qualities, not on birth, not on family name. So that's it for now. Have the rest of the day with lots of peace and lots of love. Hare Krishna.